nation against nation, brother against. Good evening and welcome to Deliverance Church Nangata. This is the biblical perspective program that comes to you from the altars of Deliverance Church Nangata. We try to look at what is uh, being reported in both the print media, the electronic media, but uh, we don't usually, you know, visit the social media because we still find a lot of uh, untrue, half-truths and some things that are not proper for those that are in the social media platform. So we mm -hmm. usually would focus on the main media uh, communicators and particulars of what is printed. And uh, with me today is a gentleman I have uh, tremendous regard for. He's an elder in his own right. He worked for the telecommunication industry for a long time, rising from a very low level to a, a very high level because of his consistency. And this is uh, the, the, the Reverend Dr. J.B. Moremi. Thank you. Asante, Asante, Asante. <laughs> yeah. Thank uh, you very much. Now, we are dealing with a crisis in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because our doctors have downed their tools. Indeed. And uh, there seems to be a very serious standoff sure. between the, the government, both county and national, and also the doctors. Indeed. And uh, I, I was looking at the, some of the things that have been reported in the, in the press. Yes. That uh, the Council of Governors, uh, who, who, who of course critical to the whole process, yeah. Want doctors, uh, CBA, that is the, 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 the conversation they had had, right. reviewed mm -hmm. and blames political incitement for the strike. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so this collective bargaining agreement right. was signed in the previous administration. Right. And of course, the current administration, when agreements are done, they are supposed to be still binding. Right, right, right. But the Council of Governors is de you know, demanding a review of the doctors collected by getting an agreement. Right. And the Council, through the Health Committee Chairman, Muzoni, uh, Muzoni Njoki, said, the current CBA between the doctors' union, the KMPDU, and the national government contains components that are not only difficult to implement, but are reasonable. Mm -hmm. So Juki, who doubles up as the Rakanidi governor, mm -hmm. said under the current CBA, CBA mm -hmm. about 95% of the doctors have individual contracts with respective counties. Right. The governors spoke today in Nairobi during, uh, of course, the, the Quality Healthcare Kenya Award. Right. To him, it is thus unfair for the doctors to hold assembly down tools, crippling the health sector across the country. You know? And he said, I can assure you that 95% of the health personnel, including the doctors, clinical officers, lab technicians, and nurses, have individual contracts with these counties. Okay? Indeed. Uh, Indeed. In this regard, doctors in Nairobi County cannot be answerable to the governor of the Raka, Nidhi, and vice versa. That's true. So the governor said, uh, said it thus baffles the council that all the doctors across the country, uh, county governments are registered under one umbrella of KMPDU that purports to make decisions for them. Sure. Do you understand there? No, I, mean, I, I think yeah. this is actually a little bit unfair yeah. to the government, yeah. even to the county governments, yeah. because at the end of the day, yeah. you have an employer. Yeah. There is authority above you. Yes. And in every institution, yeah. you have got authorities. Yes. And there are levels. Yes. of authorities. Yes. So when you come to the counties, you have got the governor, yeah. and you have got everybody under that particular this governor. And if the governors are giving what is expected of them to the doctors, yes. those who are under the national government as it were, they cannot actually 
down tools. Yeah. Because the greatest thing that you can do is having that kind of compassion. Yes. And always looking forward to delivering services yeah. to the Mwananchi. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I can tell you, Dr. Yeah. At the end of the day, all what there is in any human being in this world, yeah. three basic things are needed. Yeah. Food, yeah. shelter, and clothing. Yes. And I can tell you, on the basis of even the word of the living God, yeah. godliness and contentment is great gain. Yes. For we brought nothing into this world. Yeah. And it is certain we shall take nothing from yes. this world. Yes. And let Dr. Just mm. imagine. Mm. Just imagine. If we have got food, shelter, and clothing, of course there is also a however. Yeah. In Proverbs 13, verse mm. is 22. Mm. And it says, a good man yeah. leaves inheritance to his children, children. Yes. Anything beyond that yeah. is what is called riches. Yeah. And that riches starts making people proud, people looking down on others, yeah. because you have already gotten what is necessary for you in this world to yeah. carry out the mandate God has given unto you. Mm -hmm. look, look at this. Even this, our doctors, yeah. if we address you, my brothers and my sisters, you are doctors and you know exactly how this person has been created by God. You study and you have actually gotten degrees. And this body here is very complex, mm. extremely complex. We have one thing which is most common to us, to us all, but we don't even remember that. Mm. In other words, we have got oxygen which is given to us by the living God. Do we say thank you for the same? If you go to ICU, that's the time when you realize how expensive mm -hmm. oxygen mm -hmm. is, is and we it. do not even pay for it. So we need to come all the time, mm -hmm. Dr. Ari, yeah. with the heart of thanksgiving yes. to the one who created us, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we are passing by. Yes. And the only thing that we can be in a position to do is the, to have positive impact upon the community that we are living in. Because yes. at the end of the day, Dr. Ari, let me tell you one thing. I have buried many. Yes. Have never had in eulogy anybody being said that he has left so many houses, so many millions, or whatever. There is nothing like that which is mentioned. The only thing which is mentioned is the positive impact that that person had over the community he was living in. Yeah. And therefore, it is important for us to have that compassion mm -hmm. looking forward every moment to render services yeah. to a fellow human being. Mm -hmm. and that's the, the, the most important thing. Now, uh, you see, for me, uh, my, 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 my issues here are yes. all these doctors live in Kenya. Yes. All these doctors, there's a lot of things they know about where the country is coming from. Exactly. And where we are. You're right. And um, there are six core values right. that should be able to become factors of consideration exactly. by people who are in the medical profession. Exactly. You see, it's very hard for you to find doctors right. in the United States of America or nurses yeah. going on strike. No, they won't. Do you know why? Yeah. Because they are guided by certain fundamental values that causes them to know that yeah. if we go on strike, somebody's right. life is at stake. That is true. You so, understand? Yeah. So, the, the, you know, this, this core values, right. one of it is empathy. Right. Empathy is an incredibly important value in the medical field. Right. Because it helps you build trust with your patient and enables you to focus on their point of view. Right. Uh, now, 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 so when you are in the medical, uh, you're in the medical fraternity, it is good for you right. to have empathy. That, that is true. It's very, very important that you can be said to have empathy. And not just empathy, of course, there needs to be professionalism, professionalism 
there needs to be a degree of accountability. All these are values, but what I'm th thinking about is, why, why has money become so important that you can make a decision <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, 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 to go to the street right. to demonstrate, right. instead of using the same energy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same energy. Because you see, yeah. you still use energy. That is Let very me tell true. You, actually, they are using more energy in the street. That is very true. Than they would use when they are attending to. Because for to me, pay. what I was, I would think should happen. Right. These negotiations should still be ongoing. That's that's, because, that's given. Because one of the things that is uh, very critical for all of us to admit, yeah, is that when there is a collective bargaining agreement, right. Even if it was done in, in 2017, right? And you know, in 2017, uh, we had another leader. Definitely, which was but you see, this government is still bound. <laughs> it is bound by the by, same because the it same. is a continuation of and, the and same. And what needs to happen, though, right, is there needs to be a conversation that continues, right, so that at least there is a give and take. That, that I, is had, very I had true. the government, I had the president make a statement. Uh, that in, in all Kenyans should pay attention to. Right. And this is not the first time we are hearing statements to this effect. Right. The president said that the current public wage bill right. is unsustainable. That is true. Because mm. we are using 47%, I think, of our GDP or whatever. To, to, or whatever, to, to be able to pay salaries. Right. And the universal percentage acceptable for any growing economy is 35 percent. 35 percent. So we have overshot with 12 percent. Uh, that, that is a disaster. Now, but you see, my view is uh, some tough decisions need to be made. And, and one of the greatest challenges we have in the administration uh, of any government, including our very own, right. the one of uh, Dr. William Ruto, right and even other successive governments, right. is because of certain things that are done based on political uh, argling or political expediency. Right. Just what I'm saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think the people need to help us are the politicians. As politi are they, they and need. especially the members of parliament. That is very because true. Because the members of parliament uh, don't have to leave the president to be the one to answer some things. No, no, of course not. Okay? It is not. I expect the members of parliament should be speaking to the public. Mm -hmm. Even the person who is there as a public sp uh, government spokesman, he needs to engage the public and explain what is really going on. You see like this argument here that we have read uh, that touches on, uh, on what Mudoni Joki is saying, the governor of Lalaka Nithi. Mm -hmm. These are issues that need to be addressed. Definitely. Yes. Yeah? Because he is saying, and nobody can ignore it, he argues that it does not make sense that a collective bargaining agreement signed in 2017 sought for the recognition of intern doctors, yet during the internship, they are not employees. Uh, um, at the moment, they are not. Now, bottom line, they are being we are saying that the majority of the counties are at 95% payment of arrears and issues raised in the CBA. In that case, it would be less than 10 counties that doctors would be on strike. Mm -hmm. It would be less than 10 counties. Yeah. If, if they were respecting... Because you see, if, if all the other counties are 95% up to date mm -hmm. in terms of what was the agreement, right. why should then there be doctors all over the country? Uh, it should not actually uh, Downing their tools. It, it, in that it, case, it would be, of course, less than 10. It, as it says, he said county-based doctors union should engage governors to iron out their grievances as opposed to starving Kenyans of health services countrywide. His sentiments were uh, echoed by the principal secretary, Menemothoni, who said the doctors should reconsider their hardline stance and get back to the negotiating table in bed to find an amicable solution at the fastest time possible. Okay? 
at the fastest time possible. And that's what we ask him. Because what, what needs to happen is a give and take situation. That is very true. All right? That is very true. I, I, and I like what the president did say yesterday, because I, I, I recently we said, listen, for those who are intern, we are ready to pay them 70000 a month as a stipend. Right. That is true. Not a salary, a no. stipend right. for one year. Exactly. Because the president believes mm -hmm. that within one year, issues it of the economy will have been stabilized a, a little bit, because where now they can be able to... Exactly. And, but now, according to the CBA, and I, and I don't have it here, I mm -hmm. can inquire into it further, is that uh, the interns, uh, I think, are supposed to... I don't know whether they're supposed to be, to be paid 200,000. There was a, it, it, something to do with that. However, the president put it very, very clearly yeah. that they are able, that they are offering them yeah. 7,000 Kenya shillings. You see, I would be happy yes. if now they came and said, okay, listen, with the current cost of living, right. uh, Mr. President, whereas we are not looking for our 200, if that is what was in the agreement, we are ready to, can you give us 100,000? Do you understand? Mm. You see that now they, that is that is kind of now that's, a, that's what negotiation is about. Mm. So that they can be okay, we, we don't we, 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 we it will be a pain taking decision, but right. now that you have agreed you can take a hundred, mm. uh, please go back to work. Exactly. Report to work. We, we are going to trust, we're gonna look for it. So so that that is how uh, you, you you are you start showing that you are thinking more about your profession. That, that, a profession, that, that, because, that, listen, that, that when, the truth. when, when someone's life is threatened, yeah, because they have no nobody to attend to them, really? right? And you are a doctor, you are trained. Yeah, I, I, indeed. <laughs> you, are the, you, are the, you are the only one who can operate. You are the only one who can give a proper prescription. Yeah. And this is a profession that uh, touches on humanity. Where is your humanity when you go to the street? And leave somebody to die in the hospital, and nobody makes application to be sick. We all want to be healthy. Doctor, yeah, what you, you had said something earlier. Yeah. And, 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 and the, if we, we we cannot and we should not, a yeah. human being should not. Yeah. So much continue thinking about money, how much money he has, and all these things, whatever and whatever. Now we are speaking on a forum whereby we are, as, as Christians, the word of God is very, very crucial. For example, we know for sure, even Jesus himself let us understand. In Luke 12, verse 15, he said very, very clearly, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that we need are the three basic things in life. And if we have got uh, even beyond that, what is this then we are looking for, Dr. Mm. Look, the only thing that we have in this world, and uh, now, 15th May, I'm going to be 79 in this world. 79 years. 79 years. Yes. 15th May of this year. Yes. But I have gone all over. I have been to Japan twice. I have been to Italy. I have been to Geneva. I have been to all this country. But the, I, let me tell you one thing. I have never seen any place, anywhere, anybody gets anything beyond food, shelter, and clothing. The most important thing is that you have these basic things without working so hard. By the time you retire, mm. you are able to get these things without, it would look like people, remember when they worked so hard. In Egypt, yeah. when they were in the, in the wilderness, what did, mm. they, they, did they have to work? Collecting manna yeah. and preparing the same. And therefore, it is important for us to understand and to know mm -hmm. beyond food, shelter, and clothing, mm. there is no one, no one, no one gets anything else other than just that. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing. Let us, I mean, why is it that we put, even before, you, before even money came into play in this country, we used to be doing buttering. <laughs> the most important thing is that we had the food and the shelter and the clothing, and that's all. Otherwise, money is a means of exchange 
and it doesn't mean anything beyond the food, shelter, and clothing. Kabisa. Mm. And I can tell you for sure. I can tell you for sure. Mm. Like you, you said, eh? I worked with the East African Post and Telecommunications for some 22 good years. And I left when I was a principal international relations officer, trotting the globe. Mm. And I can tell you for sure. Mm. We need to have values. 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 Respect a human being. Yes. The life of a human being is so important. Yes. If you lose a human being, you can never recover. Mm -hmm. So I plead with our friends. I know my, my wife was also a medic mm. before she retired in 2005. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, life is so, so precious. You lose life, you can never recover it. Mm -hmm. You can never recover it. So in that particular case, I plead with my brothers and my sisters, your work, the work that you are doing is so vital, so vital, and we need your services. The most important thing is, are you in a position to come to do what you are doing comfortably? It is not the amount of money. It is comfortably you are able to render services to your brothers and sisters. And that's the greatest thing that you can be in a position to do. And that will give you peace, and peace that surpasses all understanding. Greatest gift anyone can give oneself is peace. 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 So, I, Dr. I like the statement to this effect. And this is by a gentleman who is uh, reputed uh -huh. to be uh, the most outstanding leaders of all times. Yeah. This is John Maxwell. Maxwell. Okay. Actually, uh, internationally or globally, right. it is admissible yeah. that John Maxwell mm -hmm. has written more on the subject of leaders right. uh -huh. more than any other author. This is global. Uh, do you are also a leader? You understand? Uh, do you have, been, you have yeah. written quite a number <laughs> yeah, of books? Yeah, books, but, <laughs> but, but, I, but uh, I, I'm actually, uh, because I consider... John Maxwell, in fact, I've, uh, you know, for me, because of my leadership intuition, right. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, 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 I really have a very good connection. I have a very good, uh, you know, John Maxwell. Anytime John Maxwell is in Kenya, mm -hmm. you'll find me his meeting. Whether right. they are costing or they're not costing. Right. Uh, Monroe. Right. Uh, you know, Miles Monroe. Right. Uh, I, you know, Bill Hybos. Right. For me, uh, leadership is what... And I know my calling is clear. I'm, I'm, I'm called to be a leadership developer. Right. So this is something I'm going to do. I know it's a calling. Right. And I'll keep writing. But I'm very, very impressed by John Maxwell. Right, right. This is what John Maxwell says. Mm. He has visited very, very many presidents across the globe. Right. And times he meets them, right. he asks them mm -hmm. a very, very simple question. Right. As a leader of yeah. this nation, yeah. What is your greatest interest? Right. Is your interest about how this position is going to benefit you personally? Mm -hmm. Or how you can use your position to benefit others? Sure. And he says, any leader that right. would be in a position thinking about how they are going to benefit themselves mm -hmm. is out of order. Out of order. Leadership is about considering the welfare of others. Amen. And I wish that can be. And that's what I'm saying. Even those who are uh, the leaders within yeah. the within the, the, the union mm. of, of doctors. Right. If, if we're a leader, yeah. why would you be not considering the welfare of others? That you can down your stool, you can tell your unionable doctors mm. to down their tools across the country because of money and refusing to come to a negotiating table right. uh, and raising demands that are not uh, possible. Because, you see, I'm just reading a, a, an article that was dated on the 23rd of March. Right which says that the, the, the wage bill to ordinary revenue ratio mm -hmm. has declined from 54.77 uh, in 2020-2021 20, 20, mm -hmm. to 47. So uh, this has gone down. And, the, and, and then, as it says, it is projected to reduce further mm -hmm. to 43 
uh, in 2022-23, uh, in and it's expected to even go further down to 40.45 in 2023-2024. That is according to the government projection. Right. But right now, like the person said, and this is agreeable with the statement, it's at 47%. Yeah, and that quite... Uh, I mean, Dr. Ari, there is something here. There is something here which is very, very important. You see, the, they have a right to demand their right. Yeah. However, we all need to be realistic. Yeah. We know exactly where we, have, we are coming, Kenyans. Yeah. We are all citizens of this nation. Mm -hmm. We know exactly where we are doing, where, mm -hmm. where we have been, where we are, and probably, by God's grace, this economy is going to rise very fast. I believe so. And, 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 I, and I can tell you this thing. Mm -hmm. What the doctors are saying is what, this is an English saying. Mm. They themselves, they are, they are doing this. And, and mm. this is like a cutting one's nose to spite, to spit <laughs> your nose. Mm. And you know what the, the description of this is this? Yes. It says this. Cutting of your nose to spit your, your, your face is a, an expression used to describe needless self-destructive overreaction mm. to a problem. Don't cut off your nose to, sp to spit your nose is a warning against acting out of peak or against pursuing revenge mm -hmm. in a way that would damage yourself more than the object mm. itself. So in that particular case, we don't, because if let's say they were to get this kind of salary, I mean, they, I mean the whole thing is just going to collapse. Yeah. We, are, we are in the same ship. Mm -hmm. Then we should act in a way that we are going to continue having the economic, the economic ship of this nation floating. Mm -hmm. Because if we sink, we are all going to sink. Uh, what my view is, uh, the attitude that we need to have as we wrap up, because I realize our time is up, mm -hmm. my passionate appeal to everyone who is listening to us. You're right. We apathize with the doctors if they really have been failed in the keeping of the a collective bargaining agreement that was done in 2017. Mm -hmm. But we are all witnesses of what the country has gone through since 2017. Let us be mindful right. that between then and now, we went through a transition. Uh, we went through some very difficult times in terms of uh, the issues of COVID-19. Mm. Uh, there was also the, in, you know, when our was food security was attacked by the issue of locusts. Mm. Uh, we also went through a drought in four sure, years. Sure, it sure. was the worst drought within a, a period of about 40 years. Mm -hmm. And we lost a lot of revenue mm -hmm. because our animals died. Mm -hmm. But uh, doctors, please, we appeal to you. And we appeal to the clinical officers as well. And the whole of fraternity of you. Can you remain in the bargaining table? Right. So that there can be hope that you can go back to work. And should whatever the government offer, can you receive it, but still continue agitating through your union mm. bodies about mm. what you believe you should have? Yeah. And also, please point your challenge to the members of parliament, because everything that goes to any sector is, is, a, is, is, is actually uh, a sector that is subject, a sector that is subject to authority, on money from parliamentarians. Sure, sure. Because the government cannot spend any money without the authority of parliament. Sure. And please do not go into the business of us saying that, uh, you know, the president, why did he get the money to, to renovate state house? The question is, did he operate within the vote yeah, approved the other point. Yeah. by mm -hmm. parliament? That, that's true. Uh, and I think that's, that's a question. That's that a question, yeah. Because there's a vote. You know, for me, I worked for that the civil right. service for a while, and exactly. I understand those things about votes. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. look for where there's money to spend. Equally, equally. There's a time I was, I would be going to the person holding the, uh, the with the authority in car expenditure <laughs> to take the, you remember the LPOs? Right. LPOs, and all yes. they would need to do, you had to look through the book to see, is there money? Uh, yeah, that's true. And there's no way the person who is the AIE holder mm. would sign an LPO if there is no money. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I went through with this program. Uh, I want you to pray to close this program. I just pray for the doctors to soften their stance. Mighty Heavenly Father, we thank you.
we bless you, we glorify your holy name. We thank you even for our doctors and we ask Lord to give him grace. And grace is an enablement to do what otherwise we cannot be able to do. It is a prayer that Lord, the Lord my God, the doctors are going to be compassionate and they are going to know they were put there by the living God to take care of the well-being of the citizens of this nation. We know again, Lord, you are going to give a solution to this problem mm -hmm. as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. We thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.